All right, let's start with chapter 12. And I'm going to go with what the book has. And we're going to design a class that is good for representing a playing card. And it's going to have a rank and a suit. And the question is, what types should they be? Now, we could have a string, such as a spade for suits and queen for ranks. But the problem is, as I say in the book, you can't easily compare them to see which has a higher rank or suit. For example, the word king comes before queen in the alphabet, but king is a higher rank. So what we decided to do is we're going to use integers for the ranks and suits. And we're going to say clubs is suit zero, diamonds is one, hearts is two, spades is three. And then for the numerical ranks, two through 10, it's the corresponding integer, ace is low, and then jack, queen, and king are 11, 12, and 13. And here's, by the way, the UML diagram. They didn't put one in the book, but I'm giving you one now. So we have a private integer rank and suit. And then we have a constructor where you give it a rank and suit, and that creates the card for you. We have a getter and not a setter. And this comes in a little bit later in the chapter. We have to decide, would we like someone to be able to change the rank and suit as part of the program? And the answer is no. The three of hearts should probably always remain the three of hearts. You really don't want it to change. So we have getters, but not setters. We'll have a two string method and an equals so we can compare to see if two cards are the same or not. When we're playing the game, by the way, we're also going to need to be able to compare cards. And let me just check to see how the book defines that. Uh, the book's definition is the compare to method, which is going to be a, an instance method. Okay, so it's not gonna be static. And we're going to have compare to card other, and that's going to return an integer. They use card this, this, and that. I'm using this and other, but it's the same idea. And we'll go into that in a bit more detail. So now let's start implementing this. And I believe I have part of it implemented already here, having copied it from the book. Some of this we've already done before. We have our attributes first, and then here's our constructor. Here's the two string method. What we're going to do is we'll create a string array that has the ranks, which is null because there is no card with a value of zero. And then ace through 10, jack, queen, king. For our suits, we decided that clubs was zero. So we have an entry in element zero of this array. Then when we want to convert a card to a string, we say, take the rank name for the card rank with the word of, and then follow it by the suit that be the card belongs to. And we turn that string there. To check to see if two cards are equal, we want to check that the ranks are the same and the suits are the same. I haven't done the getters and setters yet. Let's just test this out to see that this is all working. Um, I guess I'll have a public class card tester. And I'm gonna save this in the same folder to avoid, oops, I don't want to do the students file, it's an example files. Hello, Earth to Eisenberg. And we're going to call this card tester Java. And then what we're going to do here is check to see that the constructor and other methods of the card class work as advertised. And I guess I should put my name in there and the date just for the heck of it. So let's make a card 
call it test card. And that's going to be a new card that's going to be a three. And let's see if clubs is diamonds, hearts is two. And then we should be able to say system dot out dot print line of test card. And let's compile that. Oh, yeah, I put a blank between new and card. That would help. And let's run it. And three of hearts. Cool. It's working. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with what we've written so far, but there is something that bugs me a little bit. Namely, every time I create, a, every time I want to print a card, I'm recreating these arrays. Because remember, these are local to the two string method. Okay, I've got an idea. Let's take these and make it a public variable. then everything will work fine. Now it's allocated only once instead of every time I print out the value of the card. And if I come here and I compile this again and run it, it still works great. Again, nothing wrong with it. But there's, again, something that's bugging me. Each card has its own rank. Different cards can have different ranks. That makes sense. Each card has its own suit. Different cards might have different suits. But these variables here are going to be the same for every card that we create. Each card does not need its own copy of this array. Each card does not need a separate copy of this array. What we would like to say is, no, 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 this does not belong to each instance. We want to belong to the class as a whole, and that's what we use static for. Now, when we allocate it, this, these two arrays belong to the class as a whole, and they will not be allocated per instance. Let's make it even better. Let's say we want this to be final, which means that these names are never going to be changing. And in that case, we have to, by convention, uppercase their names. And let's compile that. And when we come here, notice that we don't have to change anything in our test program. It still works exactly the way it did before. Now, remember when I said the three comma two, I had to think, oh, wait a minute. Was that you know, clubs, spades, diamonds, hearts? I, I couldn't remember what it was. Let's do some more fun with static. Let's make, excuse me a second here. Sorry, I had to cough there. Let's make a public final int. Clubs is zero. Public final int. Diamonds is one. Final int. Hearts is two. And public final int. Spades is three. This is not in the book. I'm just doing this because I think it's going to be nicer. Now that I have, oh, and these can be static also, by the way. Again, I don't have to create a new version of all of these variables for every new card that I create. This is shared among all of the cards. Let's compile that. And then when I'm going into my card tester program, I can say card.hearts. And that makes things a lot more readable, and I don't have to remember which number corresponds to which value. And everything still works great.
let's do card two it will be a new card of three card dot clubs and then let's ask if they're the same we're going to test our equals method And let's check to see that equality works on things that really are equal by comparing card two to itself. Oops. So we should get a false and a true when we run this. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, how about system dot out dot print line? That will work a lot better. Excellent. So, so far, so good. Um, again, we have the getters and setters, or the getters. Oh, we haven't written the getters. Hello, time to write those. Okay, we have a public int get rank, which will return this dot rank. We'll get a public int get suit which will return this dot suit. Okay, we've almost got this as an immutable class and I'll put a note in here. There are no setters in this class. Once a card is created, its rank and suit never change. I'm going to look in the book here. They have also something that needs to be done here to make this happen. And that is, we want these also to be final. If you make them final, then nobody can change it. Not even our own class can change it later on. that come here and make sure that everything still compiles and runs properly cool now the next thing we want to do is we want to be able to do a comparison and that's going to be a public int compare to card that namely which is the other card And now we have a decision to make. How do we compare two cards? Do we compare the rank first and then the suit? Or do we compare the suit first and then the rank? And let's see what the discussion in the book says here. Okay. Because in a card game, you want to see if one card is higher or lower than another. We can't use the less than and greater than, but again, we have our compare to method. And so some types are totally ordered. And that means you can compare any two values and tell which is bigger. So integers and strings are totally ordered. Some types are unordered, which means there's no meaningful way to say one element is bigger than another, like true and false. Okay, well, which one's bigger, true or false? That doesn't make any sense at all. Playing cards are what are called partially ordered, which means sometimes we can compare cards and sometimes not. Let me highlight that. There we go. Sometimes we can compare cards and sometimes not. Yeah. So the three of clubs is definitely higher than the two of clubs. The three of diamonds is higher than the three of clubs because diamonds are a higher suit than clubs are. But which is better, the clubs, two, three of clubs, or the two of diamonds? And so we just have to make an arbitrary choice. And as the book says, when you buy a new deck of cards, it comes sorted with all the clubs together, then all the diamonds, and so on. 
So we're going to say that suit is more important. And here is our code. And now if I were to paste this directly, it would come out um, misaligned. Notice how this is not indented properly. So again, what do I want to do when I find something like this? The answer is I want to go to the Java online formatter. There it is. And then I will paste the code in here, totally unindented, but I don't care. I will beautify. And there it is indented properly. And plug it in. Now I have to indent it to where I want it, but that's no problem. I select the lines and press the tab key. So here's how it works. If this suit of this card is less than this other card suit, then I return a negative one. It's less. If it's greater, I return one. And otherwise, the suits must be equal. That's the only other choice. Because the suits are equal, in fact, let's do this here. And then I return a negative one if less than, positive one if greater. And if neither of those is the case, I'll return zero. And that's one way to do it. And um, we'll leave it this way. There's a faster way to do it, but this is this is readable. It's understandable. So we'll, let's let it go. In fact, let's compare these two. So we're going to have test card compared to card two gives plus test card dot compared to oh, card two. So we're going to compare the three of hearts to the three of clubs. And let's see which one is. And the answer gives us a one because the test card, the three of hearts is more important than the three of clubs. Let's make a card. Card three is new card of two card dot um, spades. And then let's do system the out dot print line. In fact, let's make this better here. That way we can see what everything really is. And let's try card three here. And run that. So the three of hearts is less than the two of spades because spades are more important than hearts and we do suit first rather than rank. Okay, wonderful. We now have our card implemented. Now let's make a deck of cards by creating an array of cards. And what we're going to do is create an array of 52 cards. And we may as well do this in, let's make this, um, say this as card array dot Java. So now we're going to create an array of, of card objects and 
test it out. This company called Card Array. And we're going to pop this in here. Now, what this does is this creates an array of 52 references. To card objects, all initially set to null. In fact, let's try this system.out.println of cards sub zero and see what happens. And sure enough, it shows up as a null. We'd like to initialize the card, the, 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 this array, and create 52 card objects to fill it up. Let's see what the book has here. And the way they do it is for suit, suit less than or equal to three and rank from one to 13. Okay, that's interesting. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about something that I could do, but um, I, I would get us a little bit off track here. So here we go, let's copy this. So this index tells us where we're going to put the card. We'll have the suit running from zero up to and including three. I would actually, um, well, you know, we could do not, I could do this. I could say um, card.spades because that happens to be a three, but let's leave it as a three. And then the ranks go from one to 13. And let's go and compile that and run it. Well, that doesn't help us very much. It, how do we know that it's been initialized correctly? The answer is four. Um, do I want to use, I'll, let's use a regular for loop here for int index is zero. Well, I, I can't do, I think I'm going to run into problem if I do that. Plus, anybody think they're going to see the same problem that I'm seeing? Give you a couple of seconds to think about it. And if we compile this, it's going to tell us, oh, no, variable index was already defined. So I don't need to say int index. I can reuse the same variable. And let's go here. And there we go. Card zeros, ace of clubs, all the way through the king of clubs. Then we have our diamonds the hearts, and spades. And again, their cards number 0 through 51, because remember, arrays always start at 0 for their index numbers. OK, this is a decent place to stop right now. Um, what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to continue on with 12.7 and 12.8 how we search through an array of cards. Um, and I might even, I, I might not use the card deck on this one. I might do something different. Um, let me give that some thought. Let me look at what the book is doing here. Yeah, they're doing cards here. Okay, I see what they're doing and I think I'm gonna go with what the, oh, ah, what the heck, I'll go with the book. And I'll see you all for tomorrow's mini lecture.